Welcome back to my channel, history enthusiasts. Let's embark on an extraordinary journey today, a journey into the heart of ancient Greece, where gods, goddesses, and mythical creatures roamed, shaping the world as they knew it. This is a world brimming with stories that have stood the test of time, tales woven into the fabric of one of the most influential civilizations in human history. Now imagine the ancient Greeks, sitting around a roaring fire under a starlit sky, sharing stories of these mythical creatures. Intriguing, isn't it? These stories, these creatures, they were not merely a part of their entertainment, they were an integral part of their culture, their literature, and their religion. Ancient Greek mythology is a treasure trove of mythical creatures. From the fearsome Medusa with her hair of writhing snakes, to the mighty Minotaur, half man, half bull, lurking in the labyrinth, these creatures have become synonymous with Greek mythology. Each one has a story, a purpose, and a lesson. They were used to explain the inexplicable, to teach morals, and to instill fear and respect for the gods. But these creatures were not just fearsome beasts to be slain by heroes. Some were benevolent, like Pegasus, the winged horse, who was a faithful companion to heroes. Others were cunning tricksters, like the Sphinx, who posed riddles to those who dared cross her path. And then there were those who were neither good nor evil, but a mix of both, reflecting the complex nature of humans and life itself. These creatures, like the sirens with their enchanting songs, or the centaurs, half human, half horse, embodied the delicate balance between good and evil, wisdom and folly, love and hate. The stories of these mythical creatures have been passed down through generations, captivating minds and sparking imaginations. They have left a profound impact not just on Greek culture, but on world literature and art, influencing countless works over the centuries. So prepare yourselves as we dive into the ancient world of Greek mythology and meet these fascinating creatures. Our journey begins at the very beginning with the primordial deities. These are the first beings of Greek mythology, born from the void of emptiness even before the universe as we know it came to be. Among them, we find Chaos, Gaia, Tartarus, Eros, Erebus, and Nyx. Let's start with Chaos. This entity, whose name literally means void, is often considered the first thing to exist. It's not so much a god or a creature, but the formless empty space that gave birth to the universe. Emerging from chaos, we meet Gaia, the Earth Mother. Gaia is the personification of the Earth and one of the first Greek deities. She gave birth to the sky, the mountains, and the sea, establishing the physical world. Then we have Tartarus. Although often seen as a dark, infernal place of punishment, Tartarus was also a primordial deity, forming the abyss used as a dungeon of torment for the wicked and as the prison for the titans. Eros, the god of love, is often depicted as a mischievous child or a handsome young man in later myths. However, in the earliest tales, Eros is a primordial deity, born from chaos, and is the driving force of creation and harmony. Next is Erebus, the embodiment of darkness. Born from chaos, Erebus represents the shadow cast by celestial bodies and the darkness of the netherworld. Finally, we have Nyx, the goddess of the night. She is one of the first beings to emerge from chaos and is a figure of exceptional power and beauty. Nyx is often depicted as a charioteer, trailing stars behind her, cloaking the world in darkness. These deities, these first creatures, their stories are the foundation stones of Greek mythology. They are the original players in a cosmic drama setting the stage for all that would follow. Their roles, their narratives, they echo throughout the ages, shaping the tales of gods, heroes, and creatures yet to come. These deities set the stage for the pantheon of gods and creatures that would follow. From the primordial deities sprang the Titans, and from the Titans, the Olympians. This transition marked a new era in Greek mythology, introducing a pantheon of gods and goddesses who would rule over the heavens, the earth, and the underworld. Among these divine beings were a host of mythical creatures, each with their own unique stories and powers. Today, we delve into the tales of two such entities that have seized the fascination of history enthusiasts for centuries, the Titan Prometheus and the Olympian Pegasus. Let's start with Prometheus, son of the Titan Iapetus. Prometheus was renowned for his intelligence and as a champion of mankind. He is best known for his audacious act of stealing fire from the gods and giving it to humans. This act, though it earned him eternal punishment, was a turning point in human history, symbolizing our first step towards civilization and technological advancement. Prometheus's tale is a testament to the Titans' profound influence on Greek mythology, representing themes of defiance, sacrifice, 
and the eternal struggle between gods and mortals. The Titans, though often seen as the precursors to the Olympians, held their own distinct place in the pantheon, embodying the raw elemental forces of the cosmos. But the Olympians were not to be outdone. Among their ranks was Pegasus, one of the most beloved mythical creatures. Born from the blood of the Gorgon Medusa, Pegasus was a winged horse who flew with the speed of the wind. He served as the Mount of Heroes, a symbol of poetic inspiration, and even became a constellation in the night sky. Pegasus embodies the Olympians' grandeur and nobility, representing the ideals of beauty, freedom, and the transcendence of mortal limitations. His story, like many others in Greek mythology, is a reminder of the Olympians' omnipresence, their intertwining with mortal lives, and the enduring allure of their legends. The Titans and Olympians, in their struggles and triumphs, gave birth to an array of mythical creatures. These creatures in turn have shaped our understanding of Greek mythology, offering glimpses into an ancient world where the divine and mortal realms were inextricably linked. The union of gods and mortals often resulted in some of the most intriguing mythical creatures. This intriguing blend of divine and human characteristics brought forth beings that are both fascinating and terrifying. Consider the centaurs, creatures of duality, born of the sun god Apollo and the nymph Stilbe. These beings, with the torso of a man and the body of a horse, epitomize the struggle between civility and savagery. They represent a challenging dichotomy, the intellectual human capacity for wisdom and the raw, untamed instincts of the wild. Then there's the Minotaur, a creature conceived from the union of Queen Pasiphae of Crete and a majestic bull sent by Poseidon. The Minotaur, with the body of a man and the head of a bull, was a symbol of power, but also of fear. Trapped within the labyrinth built by the brilliant Daedalus, the Minotaur was a terrifying embodiment of isolation and despair. And we mustn't forget the satyrs, the mischievous half-human half-goat companions of Dionysus, the god of wine and celebration. These merry beings with their human upper body and goat-like lower half are notorious for their love of music, dance, and revelry. They remind us of the joyous, carefree side of human nature, yet also warn of the dangers of excess. Each of these creatures, born of the union between the gods and mortals, presents us with a captivating paradox. They embody the struggle between our civil selves, bound by rules and societal norms, and our wild selves, driven by instinct and desire. These mythical beings with their half-human, half-animal forms reflect the complexities of human nature. They serve as a mirror, revealing the duality within each of us, the intellectual and the instinctual, the civil and the wild, the joyous and the fearful. They remind us that we are indeed a blend of many elements, and it is this blend that makes us uniquely human. These creatures often symbolize the struggle between the civil and wild natures within us. So the next time you hear of a centaur, a minotaur, or a satyr, remember, they are more than just mythical creatures. They are reflections of our own selves. The ancient Greeks, being a seafaring people, populated their oceans with fascinating creatures. Now let's dive deep into the mythical waters and discover these captivating beings. Our first stop is the haunting melody of the sirens. These were not your typical sea maidens. Instead, they were bird women who lured sailors to their doom with their enchanting songs. The sirens were said to reside on an island surrounded by dangerous rocks, and their irresistible music led countless sailors to shipwreck on these deadly shores. The most famous encounter with the sirens is perhaps that of Odysseus, who had his crew block their ears with wax while he himself was tied to the mast, all to resist their deadly allure. Next, we descend into the darker depths to confront Scylla and Charybdis. These two monsters resided in the narrow Strait of Messina, where they terrorized passing ships. Scylla, a sea monster with six heads, would snatch and devour sailors from the decks of ships. On the opposite side of the strait lurked Charybdis, a giant sea creature that created whirlpools powerful enough to pull entire ships under the water. The phrase between Scylla and Charybdis has since entered the English language, symbolizing a situation where one has to choose between two equally dangerous options. These sea creatures were not just figments of ancient imagination. They symbolized the very real dangers that the Greeks faced at sea. The sirens represented the seductive allure of the unknown, while Scylla and Charybdis embodied the treacherous nature of the sea itself. They served as reminders that no matter how much humans might yearn for adventure and exploration, the sea was a powerful, unpredictable, and often dangerous force. 
These sea creatures often served as embodiments of the unpredictable and dangerous nature of the sea. The ancient Greeks also looked to the sky and imagined creatures that could soar above the earth. Picture this, a world where the azure dome of the sky is not just filled with birds, but also with mythical creatures, who, with their magnificent wings, could traverse the heavens. One such creature of Greek mythology was the harpy, a fearsome beast with the body of a bird and the face of a woman. Harpies were considered the spirits of wind. They were swift and unyielding, known for their speed and their terrifying nature. It was said that they could snatch away people and things while flying at incredible speeds. These winged women were often associated with the sudden gusts of wind that swept the Greek Isles, embodying the capricious and sometimes destructive nature of the elements. Then there's the phoenix, a bird that truly captivates the imagination. It was a long-lived bird said to live for hundreds of years before meeting its end in a show of flames and combustion. But from the ashes of its predecessor, a new phoenix would rise, reborn and renewed. This cycle of death and rebirth made the phoenix a powerful symbol of renewal and eternal life. The phoenix's vibrant plumage and its life cycle made it a popular figure in Greek mythology, embodying the sun, which dies each night only to be reborn with the dawn. It was a creature of unsurpassed beauty and power, representing the unending cycle of life, death, and rebirth. These winged creatures were more than just figments of the imagination. They were embodiments of natural forces, symbols of the human condition, and representations of abstract concepts. They were an integral part of Greek mythology, bringing to life the ancient Greeks' understanding of their world and their place in it. These winged creatures often symbolized freedom, power, and the divine. Finally, we journey to the underworld, home to some of the most terrifying creatures in Greek mythology. This realm, shrouded in darkness and mystery, houses beings that are as fascinating as they are fearsome. One of the most infamous underworld creatures is Cerberus, the three-headed dog. This hulking beast with serpents sprouting from its body and a tail that ends in a snake's head is the loyal pet of Hades, the god of the underworld. Cerberus's primary duty is to guard the gates of the underworld and prevent the dead from escaping. It's said that Cerberus was overcome only once by the hero Heracles as part of his twelve labors. Now let's turn our attention to Charon, the ferryman of the dead. Charon is a crucial figure in Greek mythology, responsible for transporting souls across the rivers Styx and Acheron, which separated the world of the living from the world of the dead. To make this journey, a soul had to pay Charon an obelisk, a small coin, which was traditionally placed in the mouth of a deceased person during burial rites. Charon is often depicted as a grim old man, who takes his duty seriously. He refuses passage to those who cannot pay the fare, or who have not received proper burial rites, leaving their souls to wander the shores of the river for a hundred years. These underworld creatures, Cerberus and Charon, may be terrifying, but they are not evil. They serve a purpose, maintaining the balance between life and death, ensuring that the realms of the living and the dead remain separate and distinct. They are an integral part of the Greek underworld, a place that, while feared, was also respected. These underworld creatures served as reminders of mortality and the inevitability of death. They underscore the ancient Greeks' understanding of life's transient nature and the certainty of an afterlife. Their tales continue to captivate us, reminding us of the rich tapestry of Greek mythology and its enduring impact on our understanding of the world. From the dawn of creation to the depths of the underworld, Greek mythology is populated by a fascinating array of creatures. We've traveled through time, unraveling the tales of primordial deities, the Titans and Olympians, their beastly offspring, the mysterious sea creatures, the majestic winged beings, and the eerie underworld inhabitants. Each one, a testament to the rich imagination and storytelling prowess of the ancient Greeks. We've discovered how these myths have woven themselves into the fabric of our culture and continue to inspire art, literature, and even our understanding of the human condition. It's a world where fantasy and history intertwine, where gods and monsters serve as metaphors for our own hopes, fears, and desires. As we wrap up this mythical journey, let's appreciate the enduring legacy of these tales, their power to captivate, and the timeless wisdom they impart. I hope you enjoyed this journey through Greek mythology. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more fascinating historical content. Until next time.